M. Night Shyamalan split open this weekend, and boy, do we need to talk about that last scene. I'm Andy Signor, and this is Screen Junkies News. Guys, I'm so happy to be here. Roth Cornett, Dan Merle, Andy Signor. We are going to be talking about Split, but I have to do something first. Guys, we are going to spoil this movie for you. And I don't say this rarely. I am rarely surprised in a movie, so I encourage and encourage and implore you, turn us off, go outside, get in the car, and go see this movie. This mo The biggest surprise for me was that this movie, how much I enjoyed this movie, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be spoiled somewhere. If you haven't been spoiled yet, kudos please just turn us off and come back and watch it after you've done because I don't want to ruin it. That right. said, if you've seen the film, you're going to want to talk about it, and boy, have I wanted to talk about this movie, so let's get to it. Yes. Guys, the, the twi to, for those who need to know the twist and what's going on, the movie ends, and then the movie gives us a Marvel Easter egg <laughs> end scene. Well, not Marvel, but, but yeah. it's Marvel-style yeah, yeah, Easter egg at the end where Bruce Willis shows up connecting this film to Unbreakable, and I was just... Did not see this coming. Did no. not see that coming at all. And then also, I think we were talking about this earlier. Some of the responses in the theater were out of. They I want to go it. see it again <laughs> yes. in a theater, like at midnight, just yes. to see people lose their minds. When I remember after we saw it, I just we all I looked at him like, how did we not know this was in it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> that was my main secret? thing. Was like, congratulations, you know, <laughs> Unbreakable. Brilliantly did this thing of oh it was a comic book movie all along you just didn't know it was a comic book movie and I was like oh that's really that, in, a, in a weird way that's kind of one of my favorite twists and then like while I'm watching the scene and we're in full spoiler territory now while I'm watching the scene and the horror and then he becomes the beast at the end and I'm like uh, okay this is kind of weird and then at the end he's, he's he's got unbreakable skin and he's like this invincible guy and I'm like okay that was kind of a weird place to take that not what I was expecting. And then at the end, and they show like, oh, it's like that guy they locked up. What was his name? And you, like, Mr. Glass. Glass. And I was like, how did I not see that? <laughs> how did? Because I just, I never crossed my well, mind. Well, and the music, the unbreakable theme was yeah. happening in that diner. Yeah. So yeah. the true fans are starting to go, what? what? I remember Jeremy and yeah. Yeah. the people we saw it with were like, I knew as soon as that music was kicking, like, wait a second, what's going to happen? Right. So I was very impressed by this. But let's take a minute just to talk about the film because yeah. I do think without this twist, mm -hmm. the film is still a really good movie. It's it was Surprised. It's a pretty solid film without this twist. If they hadn't had this, I would have come out of it thinking like, you know what? There's some great tension. I thought the second half was better than the first half. Uh, it took some weird choices, but uh, but it was still really good. But when you recontextualize it, and that's why when Roth and I were reviewing this, we didn't say this is a twist. It's not a twist in the sense that, oh, this completely changes everything about this movie. It just com it puts it in a different frame of reference. Mm -hmm. I think the thing about that ending, too, is that, to your point, Dan, you're right. It does justify the heightened places that the mm -hmm. movie goes, right? Like, some people I know, just based on the trailers, have been like, I don't know if I want to see it because it's not really dealing with mental illness in a realistic way. No, it's definitely not. Oh, no. And then by the end of the movie, you're like, yeah. It's all yeah, fantastical. It's all fantastical. Yeah. You're in an unbreakable kind of world. This is a very grounded comic book movie, in a way, and this is a super supervillain you've just seen his origin. Right, well I liked it in the fact that it was very similar to Unbreakable and that they were trying to make this more realistic version of a superhero mm -hmm. movie and I feel mm -hmm. like that back when Unbreakable happened this was way before the superhero trend that was a cool idea and yeah. I, I was always wanted to see more from that idea and then they made the Heroes, the show and a lot of stuff was coming out sort of miming that material so I thought they were doing a really good job of actually creating this sort of let's take split personality and like push it to the limit of what mm -hmm. could a human do so I was invested in this movie and I was, and I was really Investment because of James McAvoy. Like oh James McAvoy God. just completely so engrossed me, just so blew me away with the range. Like the the moment at the end, you're just it, it's it's sort of like you know what where the movie's gonna go. Like or at least there were it was like a greatest hit store. Like I'm like I can't wait for him to have all the multiple personalities yeah. happen at once. I can't wait to see the Beast. And they don't they don't disappoint. They give you those things that they're sort of teasing you throughout the way. But that moment where he's where they say the name and he that and they've alluded that once you say the name. He, all the personalities are going to take to the light. Right. I was just like, I just loved watching him have yeah. to like play that back and forth. It was so brilliant. And putting that back into the context again of a comic book movie, every supervillain has a weakness. Yep. Yeah, And exactly. that's his weakness. Say his name and say my name. Um, it's the opposite of Walter White in a way. You say his name and it totally undercuts him. And that is yeah. his weakness. And the other thing that's cool here is that I feel like all of these studios are trying to crack how to tell the origin story and the story of a super villain. Mm -hmm. We know how to tell the story of the hero. And oddly enough, M. Knight did it. You know, he told the origin of 
the villain and the hero with Unbreakable, but this is just straight up on the villain. And you understand him because yeah. it is a psychological journey. You, he was tortured. You understand where he's coming from, where the pain comes from. And they didn't take it too far with the beast. Mm -mm. I was worried for a minute, like, is he's he going to suddenly go grow hair? hair. Yeah. Like, no, I like the veins were actually yeah. really cool. Like, it was, it was, it was it, M. Night showed restraint. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes he did. Yes. I mean, finally, I feel like Bloomhouse and this lack of a budget has forced him to go back to his roots and just really focus on what matters. And yeah. so I applaud it. But here's so let's now that we've we've said it out, we can finally talk about it. Where I, is it going though? Well, I, here's what I would kind of do one what if. Like yeah. Yeah. my only criticism of it, like in the moment as a fanboy, I was like, holy shit, they got Bruce Willis. He's oh my god, they're gonna do it. This is right. really happening. I, it felt a little weird in in hindsight of like, how do the people know about Mr. Glass? How does that make sense? Uh, to me, uh, the the spin I wonder, and I'm just asking back. I think it would have been cooler if he had gotten Samuel Jackson mm -hmm. and if we had caught James McAvoy and put him in the cell and then it was him against the cell and suddenly it was like, hey, and then someone's talking to him and it's Mr. Glass, right. that guy I want to recruit you. I, I don't know. Did the, did the twist work for you in that way or do you feel like now you know what it is? Would you have written it any other way? I think it was a great reveal because, again, you have Bruce Willis and I like this idea of like, you know that Mr. Glass is in prison. Mm -hmm. You know where he is. I like the idea that, like, he's still David Dunn. He's still doing some kind of maintenance work. You know, he's still the average everyday guy. So keep I like the, the fact, radar. yeah, and you keep it that it's 15 years later. It establishes that it's 15 years later. I like that it's it gives me a better idea of what's going on because you know that David Dunn's still out there, mm -hmm. that he's, he's, he's still has his secret identity, and that he's still on the job. And that he's going to go after him. I mean, right. my assumption that is that be, by being on the job, he's now going after the beast. And is he going right? after other people? Has yeah. he, is this the just horde. another the horde, yeah. which is a great yeah. comic book the name horde, yeah. for you know Mr. Glass, the horde. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's I, I've, I have an interesting. I mean, we'll talk about whether this is going to continue or not. But it is. It is again when you look back on it, uh, Unbreakable established, which is true, the comic book thing of. A superhero and a supervillain are the same, but opposite. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, they have very similar qualities, but they're complete opposites in other ways. What do supervillains do to defeat the, uh, the superhero that they themselves can't defeat? They send somebody to fight them with their same power, which is what the Horde has. He is invincible. Mm -hmm. Bruce Willis is unbreakable. Yep. We yep. saw Superman 4 make Nuclear Man to fight Superman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Superman 3 was kind of the same thing. Split Superman against himself. The only way to defeat the unbreakable person is it's to true. find somebody else who, ha who can match up against them, and that's what we have now. And that was my question that I was left with, are we going, you know, he originally talked about Unbreakable as this trilogy that he never really got to fulfill. Yeah. So did this just go in a, because of the passage of time, go into a direction yeah. that is new and surprising? And now do we see them pitted up against each other with McAvoy? And potentially does Mr. Glass, does he break out, you mm -hmm. know? Do they join up together? Is well, that what happened? do we think happens? Mr. Glass had gotten in touch with him any prior time? Because this research has been documented. Probably yeah. not that yet. there was split personalities. So. This is the time, again, this is the time, if you're going by the comic book storyline, for the supervillain to reach out yeah. and have him break him out of prison or do whatever. You know, Mr. Glass bides his time. That's what he does. Well, it's interesting because then in this world, because I'm trying to remember what he said exactly, the person's like, oh, did they? Did the newscaster say supervillain? Which triggered the lady in the dinner. It reminds me of. He Stuka. said. He said. How did like, the lady in the in the diner th remember Mr. Glass? Is what I'm trying to remember. I I think that he and correct us we if we're, this once. we're yeah. wrong, but I remember it being that she was saying he, he's something to the effect of superhuman. That that because it's, Mr. Uh, Glass can, wasn't. Yeah. He That's is, where I'm confused. He had a superhuman intellect, and he, he was is, kind of a supervillain. Yeah. The supervillain, because he, I thought that she said supervillain because he murdered so many people with all mm -hmm. those things yeah. trying to find his person. So, yeah, in that regard, if the if the implying society knows about Mr. Glass and the supervillain, right. it would think McAvoy would do his research and stumble upon mm -hmm. this other person to figure out who else is out there like me. So I, this opens up a whole new world, too. I mean, let's go back, though. I mean... I'm curious. Do we feel like, and I wish we could talk to M. Night and we're, we're trying to reach out, but it, do we think this was the goal in the script? Like, do you think he wrote this script under the guise of I'm going to sneak in an Unbreakable sequel, or do you feel like this was something he realized midway through, this is a perfect little way to make this work? I think he probably had this idea for a while. I think so, too. I think that he he challenges himself as a filmmaker. Now, Sometimes that doesn't work. We've seen it. We've seen <laughs> yeah. it. But you know, I take After Earth and take uh, Last Airbender and 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 the happening <laughs> and even the village. If you look at them, as bad as they may have been, they were not lazily done. They were all ambitious risks. They 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 were they swung for the fences. They committed to what they were. 
a lot of times that tended to be horribly misguided, but this, and it, like, again, when Roth and I were reviewing, the thing that made this work was that everyone involved committed to it so mm -hmm. much. Most of all, James McAvoy, we can tell M. Night too. It's just like, this is the tone I'm going to strike. This is what I'm going to do. This is the kind of movie I'm going to make. It's going to be weird as hell. It might not work, but I'm not going to compromise. So I, to me, that says that he's almost too meticulous to say at the last minute, oh, I'm going to, chuck this at the end. I think that this is probably an idea that he liked, an idea that he's been throwing around for a while. I have to agree. He he and I agree with you about his filmmaking too. He he is not a guy that like is accidentally doing things, you know right. what I mean? And so to me, I I think Unbreakable has been um, on his mind for a really long time. I got to interview him for Wayward Pines and asked him about it because Unbreakable is my favorite movie of him. I know that's unusual. Most people love The Sixth Sense. But um, at the time, he said, maybe I would be open to a TV series. Mm -hmm. You know, he tweeted with Patton when Patton came on. Well, I was waiting. Yeah, was that, yeah. So we have this interesting back to back uh, thing where it's like we had made Pride and Patton Oswald to do. Uh, to pitch the sequel, and so it got really. Um, uh, sorry, it's already up there. I was trying to set it up, but yes, uh, we had made this thing to to talk about the sequel to Unbreakable, and then M Night shared it, and M Night wrote, "I may need to fly Pat and Oswald here out to Philly to help me crack the Unbreakable sequel." Love the enthusiasm. The fact that he was saying that need to crack it yeah. implies yeah. he's he's working he's on it. it. Yeah. He's yeah. Listening, yeah. listening to patterns with one. open ears. Um, so yeah, it does seem to me like there was clearly this was sort of probably his goal all along was to figure out how do we do it. And I'm I'm just so impressed that he was able to to get the studio to and everyone to it. not it, it say this is the unbreakable sequel. Like yeah. let's hold on to this. Yeah. And have it and let's see how they react. And I think it's only going to make the fans that much more excited. And I think it's I think it's going to take this weekend. And then I think it's going to have great word of mouth and mm -hmm. do well. Right. And yeah. I really think that if if that happens, I think Bruce Willis has always been down to return to that character. They've both talked about yeah. it in interviews. Yeah, Willis and, and Jackson have said, yeah, I would totally come back and do it. Well, would you like to see another movie or a TV show? I would like to see another movie personally. But yeah. the risk here is how many people remember Unbreakable? Because, for example, you said there was somebody in our theater that was... Very excited by this, <laughs> uh, almost too excited. But I had there was a there was a very nice lady walking out as we were walking out that turned to me and said, "Why? What's? Why was everyone so excited? I don't understand." So, the excitement for this depends entirely on how many people out there remember Unbreakable and would be excited enough and are excited enough. Because if you don't remember Unbreakable, the ending of this movie makes no sense. Yeah. The well, tag makes true. no sense. No, the tag doesn't make sense, but I yeah. think the movie, the movie still, still is works. entertaining. But, but it's it'll look, be interesting to see how, what the just, Unbreakable enthusiasm It's funny is. to me because when I saw Avengers way yeah. back at the first press screening opportunity, yeah. um, packed theater with a lot of press and other people, Everyone came up after the end and was, who was the purple guy? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like, even know. Yeah. I was like, right, but it's like, Thanos, it's just, Thanos? It, I yeah. think it will help in snowballing sort of enthusiasm and excitement and word of mouth because they'll want to go look it up and see mm -hmm. it. Go watch so I think it only on. adds a cherry on top to what I think is a fantastic movie. I did have one other thing I want to ask, though, I, I, uh, because um, there was one thing I, what I was impressed by this movie, it did trick me in a way. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you guys saw any other, because you go into one of these M. Night Shyamalan movies and you're assuming, I know what the twist is. But I, I assumed the girl, the main girl, yeah. was going to, be her own split personality mm -hmm. or was working with him mm -hmm. to make this happen. There was this scene where she's like tells the girl to pee on herself yeah. right away. We are like, how did you know that? That's just a weird M. Night Shyamalan thing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. He that, just doesn't that's know that's sort of his benefit. He sort of writes, writes yeah. weird. No. He writes really I've weird. Given, no, 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 no. I've given that advice. <laughs> I really? swear to God, yeah. Is that a common thing? No, 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 yeah. I Because I grew up in New York on the subway. I was like, it's because she's a hunter. Yeah, so that's no, like, no, no, no. And I, I, my girlfriend and I, my one of my best friends and I, when we would learn when we were very young, um, how to ditch a guy that was following you on the subway, which is you got off and then you immediately got back on in another car. And her parents advised us, and advice that I gave to other women that I knew was, if if it really gets tricky, be gross. Right. It's Pee true. On Plus, yourself, we learned she pick learned. Your nose, we be do gross. learn she had a bad history with the uncle yeah. that said yeah. backstory with her. She probably used that yeah. tactic that's, on herself. That's a girl that would know how to protect herself right. because she wasn't protected by others. So to me, weird, I, was, of I the thought that early, was setting that early up for her moment. to have a much more critical role in the end of that yeah. movie, which it, it that was the, one of the main things about the movie. I'm like, did that really work? It gave a little bit of character motivation, but it, well, because it still, also like, was because he was OCD and he was yeah. like, oh, I can't yeah. touch. Yeah. 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 She's it smart. felt like she yeah. totally, but it felt like she knew more than she, we were right. alluding. Oh, is all is to all me, that played to me. I had that moment. I had a different reaction in that moment. I went, that's brilliant. That tells me exactly who this girl is. I know why she's defensive. She right. knows how to protect. She herself. wants that. She's not going to just yeah. try she's and not, slash yeah. him because that's not going to uh, work. I thought that's really weird, and I don't know why I put that in the movie, but hey, that's just me.
But there were a couple other moments where I just thought that it was it actually worked to the benefit because then I my head was going down the wrong path, which yeah. allowed me to not even think like, oh wait, this is going to connect to Unbreakable and all those things. Why would you ever think that? <laughs> yeah. Why, Why would, would you, you ever, ever think, think that? that? It's great, and then I love that. That's when a movie can pull the wool over your eyes and totally pull surprise on you. It's just wonderful. It was awesome. I think one of the things that I really liked about it is that it unfolded in a way that I felt towards the middle of the movie. I didn't think it was trying to trick me. I just thought it was trying to tell the story of the mm. guy, and it was relying on McAvoy's performance, which was so extraordinary. It blows my mind, and it was relying on. Um, sort of our investment in these characters and the interest in the story. And I was excited by that. And so then when a twist did come in and it was so satisfactory, I thought, that's awesome. He's not trying to force anything. And kudos to Blumhouse and everyone behind that, that did this movie. It would have been very easy to, to uh -huh. take, try to take an easy out and market this movie by saying, like, the second chapter of the yeah. Unbreakable Saga, even though that comes at the end. For there to be no advanced buzz on this, yeah. for nobody. I mean, we live in a, we, there's no secret in this town. There's no secret that, especially with us, when we have people in, nobody ever told us that this, no one that I, that I know of knew that this was going to be in the saga. So kudos to M. Night and the studio and everyone for saying, we're not going to mention it. Yeah. We're not going to hype it. We're not going to publicize it. We're not going to drop hints about it during the movie so that you guess it. We're just going to drop this on you right before you walk out the door. And get Bruce Willis to and show, which is Willis a huge gift. Yeah. That's a huge, <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, it's not like in secret yeah, for yeah. not to leak. Exactly, That's for all amazing. that room of extras, not say I did a scene with um, Bruce Willis. Yeah, Mark Hamill can't sneeze in this town without people <laughs> yeah. wondering where he is and what he's doing. Let's uh, start the uh, McAvoy Oscar campaign. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I, we had that debate. I, I, it depends how, how challenging the other roles are. Yeah, this, yeah. But I think we should not forget, and we should bring it back up in that season because it was brought. It was a fantastic uh, tour de force performance. Uh, but that's all we got. Please click over here for more videos and tell us what you thought in the comments of any theories that we missed or thoughts that you want to see for Unbreakable 3. We'll see you soon.